Hello. My vote on September the 18th this year, as with every decision in anyone's life, is connected to all previous decisions, experiences, events and relationship that's, relationships that have come before. This is a personal history, so to speak. Let's begin on this day in 1979, when I was born, to a woman who had left the Isle of Lewis in 1963 at the age of 17 to begin her life's work as a teacher journeying from Glasgow to Zambia and beyond. She gave birth to me 35 years ago today in Adelaide, Australia. Two weeks later, she flew me and my older brother to Papua New Guinea to join my father, an Australian of French and English ancestry. Four years later, and my father's work moved us to Jakarta, Indonesia, which would be my main home for the next 14 years. Jakarta, Indonesia, where our family, as most expatriate families do, employed a pambantu, a helper, an additional member of the family, a member of staff, a servant, a man called Tarsid, a man with a family of 12 living 11 or so hours away by train, a man who was available to feed me and care for me seven days a week, 24 hours a day, a man whose surname I never knew. Most summers, my mum would take my brother and me home to the Isle of Lewis to stay with her parents. We would trample across the Barvis Moor, climb over the Calamish stones in the Carnaway Brook, race over the Valtos dunes, convinced that Viking ships would land at any moment and take me captive. And at night, we would drive home to Stornoway, where the swings were chained on Sundays, and I would wake up at 4 a.m. missing the sound of the mosque call to prayer. As a child, my nightly routine often involved a makeshift Hindu shrine, praying to God and to Allah, crossing myself multiple times, chanting Om and blowing kisses to the air above and around me just in case. <laughs> in 1988, my mother, brother and I spent a year in rural Queensland where us kids lined up outside the school every morning to sing Australians, oh let us rejoice for we are young and free followed promptly by God save our gracious <laughs> I just, I wasn't going to see the Queen there, that's why I thought it's just a little in case there's any doubt a few years later, back at the British International School in Jakarta, I remember my classroom teacher holding a mock election. Which colour do you like? Blue, red or yellow? Why can't I choose green? Green isn't an option. But Indonesians can choose green. That is an Islamic party. We're British. We don't have parties like that. We have blue, red or yellow. Which colour do you like? But I like the colour green. In 1996, my dad took an aid job in East Timor, still then a part of Indonesia. But it had its own active separatist guerrilla movement. My brother and I visited him there, driving through its napalmed landscapes. But why did they bomb them? because they wanted to be independent. So why do they want to be independent again? Well, I guess some people have never not wanted to be independent, and I suppose this time they're hoping it will be different. But why? Because Indonesia is diverse. It holds many different peoples with many different languages, beliefs, religions, and cultures. Because one single government located in the most populous area cannot make decisions in the best interests of everyone in such a diverse nation and because the government is corrupt, nepotistic, and elitist. <laughs> so, is that why they bomb them? I suppose so. Do they hate them? No. No, I think they think they love them. They've got a funny way of showing it. And in 1997, at almost 18 years old, I left home in Indonesia and moved out on my own to London. And in 2001, I campaigned and marched against an illegal war for oil under the guise of weapons of mass destruction. 
Three years later, in 2004, East Timor voted for independence from Indonesia. And my brother went on first of many UN missions there, aiding their long journey to becoming a sustainable new nation. But why does it take so long? When are you going to come back to visit? Independence isn't something that just happens overnight. It's a long and complicated process. Is that normal? Yes, it is completely normal. Chill the fuck out. <laughs> and in 2006, I began my continuing relationship with an ever-changing community of people living in Glasgow under the, the asylum system. People who became some of my dearest friends. People who have been detained, dawn raided, evicted and made homeless. People who have been deported, who have jumped from windows to avoid deportation. People who have made their homes here, who have fallen in love here, who have had children here, who have been welcomed by their surrounding communities, people who have welcomed me into their homes and into their hearts. And in 2007, I moved to Scotland, which is now my home, and which now, in 2014, has the opportunity to vote for independence. And yes, I consider myself a Scottish person voting in this referendum. I also consider myself an Australian, and a French person, and English. I am a child of the British Empire, formed and moulded by the cultures, religions and languages of Indonesia, East Timor, Papua New Guinea and many other places and cultures besides. And I am voting yes. And that yes is not formed and not informed by an idea of patriotism to the nation of Scotland, but it is informed instead by every single moment, experience, event and relationship that has come before. And so I am saying yes. I am saying yes for my mother. For my mother as the little Yawasak who, along with her sisters and friends, arrived at school one term to discover that Gaelic was no longer the language of the classroom and they would have to catch up fast. Because in an independent Scotland, because an independent Scotland could be a step towards greater cultural confidence for all of our minority cultures. I am voting yes for Tarsid, my Pembantu, my helper, my servant, who I love and who I miss, and who I wish I could tell that I deeply feel ashamed of the inequality in our relationship. And Scotland has its own colonial shame to come to terms with. And the clearest way we can do that, and the clearest way we can begin to do that, is by dismantling the institution of empire. I am saying yes for the land that I played on during my summer holidays in Lewis, where the wind whipped my hair and the sea lashed the coast, because in an independent Scotland, we have more of a chance of seeing green and climate-aware policies at the heart of government than we do with the current setup. I am saying yes for the wee girl playing to praying to everyone to whom the idea of multiple cultures living together seemed entirely normal because an independent Scotland could be internationalist, outward looking, multicultural, diverse and welcoming of difference. I am saying yes for the little kids one wondering why they had to sing God Save the Queen. <laughs> I am saying yes because there are other options than blue, red or yellow. I am saying yes for the young activists who marched with millions <coughs> shouting not in my name. Yes for the millions of Iraqis, Afghanis, Afghanis, Iranians and the list goes on, on who have been killed in my name. Yes to a more peaceable foreign policy, and yes, yes to an end to Trident. I am saying yes for East Timor. Yes for every other country that has never been as fortunate as Scotland to have the opportunity to gain independence by peaceful means. Yes for my brothers and sisters who have been deported, who thought they were coming to a land where human rights were revered, where refuge would be offered and humanity was respected. Because as much as I might wish it were not so, we live in a world of borders and no new border control system could be more brutal and more in inhumane than the current system enforced by the United Kingdom Border Agency. And so, my yes, my yes is for more open borders and yes to close Dungavel. Yes 
yes is for the person that I will continue to grow to be, who still has a hope for a better, more equal, more humane and more sustainable Scotland and world. Yes for the children that I will hopefully one day have soon, <laughs> <laughs> who the democracy of an independent Scotland could guarantee continued free education and healthcare. And yes, yes, I know that my yes by itself will not revert the climate crisis. It will, it will not rescue us from capitalism. It will not rid Scotland or indeed anywhere of racism and bigotry. But it might, it just might be one step in a long and complicated journey towards a Scotland with an internationalist outlook, somewhere welcoming of multiculturalism and diversity, somewhere at peace, somewhere defined by hope, somewhere where my children can continue to build a fairer, more equal and sustainable world for their children, and their children, and their children, and their children, and theirs, and theirs.